If I was to rate SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown is in the books and I'm here to tell you all about this Friday Night SmackDown The return of Randy Orton on SmackDown and so much more the show was kicked off by Bianca Belair declaring, when I say declaring, you think that I was about to say that she's declaring as an entrant for a Royal Rumble, but nah, nah. She's saying that she's after the title of Yo Sky. And Damage Control came out and Dakota Kai was like, if you want to go to EO's title, you need to go through every single member of Damage Control. And after that, Charlotte Flair came out with Shotzi and she was like, she, uh, Bianca Belair is not the only one after Io's title and a bro was broken out and all of that kind of stuff. But later that night, we're gonna have Kairi Sane versus Bianca Belair in Kairi Zane's first match in a long ass time. So I'm gonna cover that a little bit later. After that, we had an interesting one, Butch versus Bobby Lashley, should I just say that it was interesting? The whole match happened because Butch was backstage and he was asked uh, what is the problem with Rich Holland and all of that stuff and Bobby Lashley came out and he started talking and Butch was like why you interrupted me and Bobby Lashley was like if you want to talk to me kid make a name for yourself first and now we have a match with Butch versus Bobby Lashley and as I said it was interesting I was not expecting a squash match to be honest and it was not a squash match Bobby Lashley tried to highlight Butch as much as possible while he's not hurt in the process with taking too much beating from him or taking an end of days and all of that stuff so it was a good match at the end Bobby Lashley won and I hope Butch has a redemption arc because everyone is bullying him that he is alone now and all of that stuff so I hope for the best for Butch and maybe he's gonna go back to the Pete Dunne roots and find his old himself and he's gonna be back on top. Arr. After that we had Joaquin Wilde versus Santos Escobar. Of course Santos Escobar will go through the whole LWO as matches. I think that he's gonna have Cruz del Toro next or Dragon Lee again or Joaquin Wilde again or Carlito will come back. But yeah, we're having that kind of arc right now where he's fighting the whole LWO. I'm not gonna be even surprised if he fights Selena, but he brought out a new unfriendly look of him with let down hair. And yeah, Santos Escobar won the match with Joaquin Wild. And I'm really curious what will happen next week. Maybe Dragon Lee will do something because Dragon Lee was helping Joaquin Wild when he was taking a beating from Santos. Who knows? Another one, Logan Paul came out the first time he came out since he winning that championship and he announced that basically there's gonna be a tournament determining who is gonna be his next challenger. In the tournament there, Karrion Cross, Bobby Lashley, Austin Theory, Grayson Waller, Kevin Owens, Santos Escobar, uh, random NXT superstar and uh, one last guy that I don't quite remember who it was but anyway it doesn't matter because KO came out he confronted Logan Paul after that the A Town Down Under came out of course they're walking everywhere with Kevin Owens and of course that led to Kevin Owens having a match with Grayson Waller which Grayson Waller lost by surprise roll up and everyone was pissed from the young side. I'm saying young side and I'm meaning Logan Paul, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. But anyway, the tournament hasn't started yet, so we don't know what will happen. The last match for the night, Kyrie Sane versus Bianca Belair. And after the SmackDown ended, I couldn't help myself. I went on Twitter and I saw that some people are mad because of Kyrie Zane losing. But at the same time, what did you expect? Not everyone can win. Not everyone can win. Someone should take the L and trust the long-term storytelling. Trust the long-term storytelling. I trust Triple H. He gave us so many good shtick already. And I'm pretty sure that he's not gonna put the talent of Kyrie Sane to waste. 
Of course, Bianca Belair should go through the whole damage control in order to get her title back, so it's normal everyone from damage control now to take the L except Io Sky. So, kind of expected. Last but not least, Randy Orton on SmackDown, and it was amazing because Adam Pearce was there, Nicodis was there, and they both tried to sign him up to Raw uh, and SmackDown and they both gave him the contract, but Paul Heyman came out and he was like, I'm gonna decide for you where you're gonna land. And if you remember, on my Monday Night Raw review, Randy Orton is hunting for the bloodline, so the bloodline came out after that Paul Heyman speech, they started to beat him up, but, but the LA Knight came out and he helped her, Randy Orton, and Randy Orton RKO'd Jimmy Uso. And after that, he took both of the contracts, and he threw away the row one and he signed to SmackDown and he said to Paul Heyman to say to Roman Reigns that daddy's back. So excited that Randy Orton is on SmackDown and also he RKO'd Nicodes when Nicodes was happy with the fact that RKO was... Did I just want to say RKO is on SmackDown? But yeah, Randy Orton is on SmackDown. So... Without being said, amazing show, and if I was to rate SmackDown, I would have given it 8.4 out of 10. Don't ask any more questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you next time. Peace. <laughs>